Hey guys, welcome back to Movie Sim Podcast. I'm Summer. And I'm Lynn. And this is our sixth episode. Yay! <laughs> and today we're going to be talking about some really fun topics. Makeup, skincare, and hair care. So we're really excited about this topic. We think it's going to be a long episode. It probably will be. Um, <laughs> but we want to get a pretty serious issue out of the way first. And then we'll get into more of the fun stuff later on. But Lynn, did you want to start off with that? Yeah, the thing about makeup that's kind of relates to what our podcast is about, especially for us, was I think it was this past year, this trend became very popular called the fox eye trend. And it was a makeup trend that kind of elongated how people's eyes look like a cat eye, basically. Mm -hmm. But the issue was when people took photos, they would pull their eyelids in their photos, right, to either make it look more sharp. But a lot of people agree that the effect was to make their eyes look a little bit more how a lot of Asian smaller eyes look. And Mm -hmm. people, I mean, including us, (laughs) were not really on board with that because, and a lot of people argued against it, saying that it wasn't racist because it's just makeup. But the problem is they're creating how they look, like with a feature that people, especially like our age when we were younger, were made fun of for. And... Mm -hmm people are still made fun of for having, you know, smaller eyes like that today. Yeah. So when you are able to do that trend and not have any repercussions from doing it, and you're just doing it for fun and say it's pretty, but then society turns around and tells people who naturally have eyes that look like that, that it's bad and ugly. That's where the problem is. And that's why people were really upset about it. Yeah. It's really surprising because there's actually still a lot of, I just looked it up, there's still a lot of YouTube tutorials on how to do fox eye makeup. And for their thumbnails, they're like pulling back. It's not just like a cat eye, like who who cares? You know, like if it's Mm -hmm. a cat eye, I really could care less. You do your makeup however you want. Mm -hmm. But they're like pulling their eyes up to make it more slanted. And their eyes look more narrow. Mm -hmm. And I also read somewhere that people are actually getting procedures done too, like Mm -hmm. cosmetic procedures to get this look permanently. Yeah, I've seen. Yeah, which is crazy. I think some celebrities have been accused of doing that. I'm not sure who though. But yeah, that is extremely problematic. Yeah, just overall, when it becomes such a big trend that people want so bad, It's just kind of crazy how people will make fun of people who have eyes like that naturally one day and then turn around and think it's cool on themselves and then still make fun of people who have that kind of eye naturally for something like that. You know, it's the same idea behind a lot of makeup trends that have to do with, you know, making your skin darker and making your lips bigger. But historically, people have made fun of black people for having the same features naturally, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, why is it suddenly desirable on people that don't have those features, but the people who have those features naturally are still discriminated against for having them yeah I know there's like a lot of celebrities who have like done I'm not just talking about for the fox eye trend but they've like taken aspects of other cultures that don't belong to their own and they like they wear it as like a fashion statement Mm -hmm. but they don't understand the backlash that people have gotten for their natural features Mm -hmm. like eyes skin nose lips even body shape honestly yeah even body shape So this just seems like another thing that people who are like influencers and celebrities are just hopping on this trend Mm -hmm. because they can (laughs) and they won't face the like they won't face discrimination against themselves because they're only doing it for like a day. They can or wash it off. That's the thing. Yeah, they can wash it off. Well, I guess some of them aren't. <laughs> oh, they're getting <laughs> cosmetic <laughs> procedures. But, like, it's so obvious when they have done that. So people know, oh, she's gotten something done. That's not her real face. Mm-hmm. You know? So it's not the same. Yeah. That kind of leads into, like another thing I kind of wanted to touch on of Asian fishing. For people that don't know, it's the same thing as black fishing. And black fishing is when it happens a lot on social media where someone either edits their photos or does their makeup or a combination of those to look like another race. And when people ask them, they lie and say that they're either mixed or that other race completely, but they're actually not. It's like the makeup they use and 
and or how they edit their photos, you know. I've seen it in recent years get more popular to do that, but for Asian fishing and people claiming that they're half Asian or like editing their photos. And I'll link an article and like a couple people that got kind of infamous, I'll say not famous, <laughs> for doing this kind of stuff because it's the same idea where they're taking things that people like us got made fun of for and capitalizing on that and people like love them for it at some point. I don't think it's mm-hmm. like as accepted anymore when people realize what's happening. There are some people that don't really see why it's wrong, but that usually just means they haven't lived through the experience of being on the side where people, you know, discriminate against you for it. Yeah. (laughs) But we should move on to the more fun stuff. I think that's (laughs) enough serious stuff because makeup is fun. It's fun for both of us. (laughs) Yes. Makeup is, makeup can be fun for anyone. Okay, so I guess first we should start off with recommendations for makeup. Ooh. Disclaimer, Lynn and I don't wear a lot of makeup <laughs> because we just, I don't know. I mean, well, look, that's a good question to start off with. Lynn, why do you, what kind of makeup do you wear? Like, what do you like to wear? And why do you choose not to wear other types of makeup? I am very big on lipstick and eyeliner. Mm-hmm. Like, if I had to choose just like the bare minimum to do things, it would be lipstick and eyeliner. Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> What's the bare minimum? <laughs> the third would probably be concealer because I have dark under eyes and I get spots like acne spots pretty often like here and there. Mm-hmm. Like I don't have a lot of acne, but I have like one or two spots constantly. So yeah, and this doesn't count powder. I have like fairly oily skin. So Mm -hmm. I don't count powder as makeup, but I powder my face just so I don't look like a greased bun all the time. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So I don't wear a lot of foundation unless I really feel like putting in a lot of effort. Mm -hmm. And I think because of COVID, obviously, I haven't been wearing that much makeup. The only thing I wear is lipstick and mascara because mm-hmm. just and some concealer under my eyes just to not look dead on video when I call my co-workers mm-hmm. but yeah my go-to's are definitely like lipstick and eyeliner what um, about you for me okay if I had to pick one thing well I guess you pick two um okay if I got <laughs> if I had to pick two things that I could not like live without in my makeup routine it would be like a tinted lip balm and then mascara. I am so big on mascara. That's the main thing that I wear. I don't wear eyeliner. Like, I've worn it maybe five times in my life. <laughs> I think I look nice with it. I just don't. I think because I don't wear it regularly, I just think I look so different that I would only wear it for parties or, like, a special event. But I wear mascara every time I do my makeup. And I love a tinted lip balm. I just love lip balms in general. Mm -hmm. And let's see, what else do I wear? I've been starting to wear concealer occasionally if if my under eyes are dark. But that's about it. I don't really wear concealer anywhere else. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, if I have like a really bad acne scar or something then I'm gonna put it there but like you I don't really get a lot of acne Mm -hmm. thank goodness yeah and I I literally don't wear foundation if I need some extra help with my under eyes I'll put a dot or two of cc cream Mm -hmm. over there but literally I don't wear foundation at all but you know what what I think is interesting mm -hmm. I think I know why because for both of us compared to each other you definitely have longer and thicker eyelashes than me. (laughs) So that's why like I wear eyeliner instead of mascara. Because if I just Mm -hmm. wear mascara, it's not gonna look like that much. So for me, the eyeliner will do for me what mascara does for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that makes total sense. Yeah, I have the Asian eyelashes that are just like short, black, and not very (laughs) thick and straight down. (laughs) Yeah, my mom has those eyelashes. <laughs> so does mine. <laughs> yeah, I guess I got kind of lucky. My eyelashes are kind of naturally, like, they're not super curly, but they, like, curl up enough that I don't have to curl them. Lucky. <laughs> yeah, and I have enough that I don't feel like I need to get eyelash extensions. Although I think people, when they get eyelash extensions, they look so good. I I'm considering trying them out. Yeah, I kind but I of heard, want like, to. I do too, but I heard like once you go for it, you never go back. So <laughs> I'm not sure I'm ready to like 
commit to spending that much money. <laughs> yeah, I heard once you get them done once, it's going to look gross if you leave them and let them fall out. And you have to pay yeah. for refills every time. So that's like the one thing that deters me from it. Yeah, same. But I've same, been thinking cause... about it because I kind of want to do, at the very least, like the lash lift thing. Because my eyelashes cannot hold a curl. <laughs> yeah. And I'm too scared yeah. to use those heated eyelash curlers because I don't want to put something hot next to my eye. It's kind of scary. Yeah, yeah, I know. I would be so afraid to do that, too. <laughs> One of the last things, I guess we'll talk more about, the, I don't know, I'll, I'll talk about this in makeup because sometimes makeup and skincare, like, they overlap. Mm -hmm. But I, one thing I wear every day is sunscreen. Same. Um, yeah, because it's that's like, I would say that's one of the most important things you need to wear no matter what. Mm -hmm. So we'll get into recs. Let's start off with like our faves. What are things you want to recommend for sunscreen? So I actually use a lot of Korean makeup brands, but I've been straying mm -hmm. away from it a little bit just because I'm so tired of ordering them and waiting like a month and a half to get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are shops here that sell them the actual like Korean brand shops he around here, but I'm too lazy to go to them. Mm -hmm. I'd rather pick up makeup at Target on the way home so I've been kind of going toward you know ELF Maybelline type stuff like drugstore makeup yeah. uh, Sephora scares me a little even though I know what I'm looking for I get really tired of people asking me if I need help <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> because I understand I, that. because I go in there without makeup on a lot of times right. so then they think I don't know what I'm looking for but I like to think I'm pretty knowledgeable about makeup and makeup application because mm -hmm. I keep up with a lot of beauty YouTubers and the trends a lot. So I know yeah, I know too. what's up, but I yeah. go in there without makeup and I feel like they think I don't know because I'm not wearing anything when I go in. But <laughs> the sunscreen I really like that I've been using is the Innisfree one. And it's like SPF mm -hmm. 37. or It's like a really awkward number. It's not like 35 or 40 or 30, like the, a multiple of five. It's like oh, 37 nice. or 36. But yeah, honestly, it also helps me with oil control, which is kind of mm -hmm. crazy. But a non-oily sunscreen is good if you have oily skin. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't clog your pores. But it's really lightweight. I go outside every day for like exercise. But I put it on even when I don't go outside because I sit in front of windows. So I'm still getting that sunlight on my face. So I still put sunscreen on every day. Yeah, that's so smart. Yeah. yeah. When I wear foundation, I use cushion foundations. And my favorite one is definitely the Moonshot Glassy Skin one. Anything we recommend, we'll, we'll link it. Yeah. Where can you find the cushion? Is that a Korean brand? Is yeah, that's a Korean brand. So whenever I buy makeup from Korea, I buy mm -hmm. it on Yes Style. Which is, if anyone's into, like, Korean makeup and stuff, that's, like, kind of the go-to site. Even though it ships kind of slow, but they have pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. So I always, like, do big hauls because you get free shipping over $35. <laughs> so I always mm -hmm. buy, like, a ton of stuff at once. <laughs> I don't wear blush a lot because I'm naturally very red in the face. <laughs> mm -hmm. Same, yeah. <laughs> but I use kind of a liquid blush from M Cosmetics. Because mm -hmm. it also has a lot of skincare in it and you just need like one drop of their blush serum. And I just put it at the tops of my cheeks a little bit. But that reminds me, before I keep talking, do you have a hard time finding like concealer and foundation that matches your skin tone? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we wanted to talk about this. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess you can call this CC cream a foundation. But I use a CC cream, like I said earlier, just very minor stuff under my eyes. I don't use it as a foundation because I don't wear a foundation really but it's by it cosmetics and it's great it's very lightweight it's not mm -hmm. heavy at all and it's got spf in it as well so i really like that but the problem is i've chosen the lightest color they have and it's still i feel like they really need to expand on the on their color range because it's literally too dark for me i'm not too pale i mean i've got like a pinkish on my face i'm very pink and white but i'm sure i think i have some yellow specks in there but yeah it's really difficult for me to find concealers as well that are my skin tone but the one that I really like is by Maybelline. It's called Instant Age Rewind Eraser. Multi That's use so concealer. popular. That one, literally everybody loves that concealer. Yeah, it's amazing. I've had it for like, I don't know, a year and a half, two years. And I still have a lot. I also don't use it a lot either. 
but Mm -hmm. it's amazing it's not quite my skin tone but it's pretty close it's like closer than the cosmetic cc cream so props to maybelline i would say they have a pretty wide range of skin tones they're the best drugstore brand yeah in terms of shade range yeah i also have that issue a lot because i think we're the same where we have both pink and yellow undertones hashtag mixed problems (laughs) <laughs> so a lot of the shades that match me the best are still too yellow in undertone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so it just looks really weird. And a lot of things don't have a good enough shade range to where we can find something that actually matches. It's always going to look a little bit off. And I think that's why me and you both also stray away from foundation because yeah. nothing looks right. <laughs> Obviously, our weird. problems are not like the same as people who have darker skin because their shade range is pathetic in yeah pretty much every single brand besides a handful so obviously we don't have as much of an issue finding something that's close enough but it's still like not gonna look great you know yeah (laughs) I I don't know it's like my cc cream literally makes me look orange like it literally makes me look like the skin tone of donald trump like it's awful Um, i just feel like yeah it is pathetic though for the darker skin tones they literally have what five or ten and that's like considered in some of the good shade range like Mm -hmm. um companies like the companies that have like the better shade ranges and they're Mm -hmm. applauded for it but they only have five or ten and it's really bad (laughs) yeah it's It's awful especially like in a drugstore brand too some drugstores carry more shades but others They'll have 15 shades of the same product, but 12 of the 15 are all like light tones. And then there's one medium tone and then one dark tone. Yeah. It's pretty pretty awful. Yeah. But a lot of times I've seen, especially people with darker skin tones, they'll also have the problem of it either being really orange or really ashy too. Yeah. It's pretty sad. So once I become super rich and can afford Fenty, I'm sure I'll never find something that truly matches me. Yeah, I was just gonna mention Fenty. I love them. They're so inclusive. Mm-hmm. But I I probably could afford Fenty, but it's a lot of money for like a foundation or concealer that I don't even wear that often. So is it worth it to me right now? Not really. So yeah, I'll just wait until I'm well off <laughs> so that I can spend my money on that. When we really um, need foundation. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this CC cream by It Cosmetics was not cheap. Oh, yeah, It Cosmetics is not a cheap brand. Yeah, I kind of regret getting it, but whatever, I got it. It's got (laughs) SPF in it, so I can't hate on it. A lot of the cushion foundations also have SPF in it all the time anyway, so which is also pretty nice. That used to be the reason why I would wear them, because I was lazy and wouldn't wear sunscreen. So I'd wear the foundation because it had SPF in it. (laughs) Now, at least you're protecting your skin. Some people don't even wear sunscreen, like, at all. Yeah, and protect if you your don't, skin. Yeah, seriously, if you need to wear, if you have, like, one takeaway from this, just please get some sunscreen. That's right for your skin type, too, though. Make sure that it's right for your skin type. Oh, um, what sunscreen do you use? Oh, yeah, I was going to mention that. I guess we can just go by categories and then talk about each of our recs. But, yeah, so for sunscreen, I use the Super Goop Unseen Sunscreen. Oh, I've heard um, such good things about that one. I absolutely love it. It's amazing. It's colorless. Like, it goes on clear. So, literally, mm-hmm. don't have to worry about it matching your skin tone, you know? Mm-hmm. Which is great. They do have a line of kind of like a CC cream sunscreen. So, mm-hmm. it has some shades in it. But, honestly, re- very pathetic shade range. Come on, Super Goop. You can do better than that. <laughs> but I love this sunscreen. It's a chemical sunscreen, which... I don't know. He's probably watched Hiram, the guy on YouTube who mm-hmm. like does the recs for skincare. He doesn't like chemical sunscreen, but I really could care less because this is amazing and it's worked really well for me because I have really dry skin and I have really sensitive skin. So mm-hmm. it's hard for me to find a sunscreen that works for me. And it's also hard for me to find something that like it's hard for me to even try something out. Because I'm afraid it will, like, fuck up my skin. But this has actually worked really well for me. Like I said, it's a chemical sunscreen, but it's reef safe, too. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you go swimming in the ocean and stuff, it won't harm the ocean, basically. (laughs) Harm all the fishies. 
Yeah, harm all the fishies. There's no fragrance in it either, so it won't irritate your skin that way either. Oh, you know what um, I hate? What? The, like, traditional sunscreen smell. That stuff is so nasty. And then when you wake up in the morning and put that on your face, it's gross. And that's why I don't oh, like the generic yeah. Neutrogena ones. Like, oh, yeah. They smell so strong of that sunscreen smell. And those would yeah. also, like, be really oily on my skin and clog my pores anyway. So that's also yeah. another one I like about the one I use. It doesn't have that gross sunscreen smell <laughs> yeah this one doesn't really have a smell it has a scent like you can tell you're putting some kind of thing on your face but like, it's not a sunscreen smell and it's like not a bad smell you know what i'm saying like mm-hmm. it's just the scent of the product it's just whatever's in there that's what it smells like it's um, not the sunscreen smell <laughs> No, it's not at all. Like, if you smelled it, you would be like, I don't know what the fuck that is. (laughs) Oh, it's also vegan and it's cruelty-free. So I really like this product. And it's SPF 40, so it's really nice. I mean, it's water and sweat resistant. But, of course, you have to reapply, too. But I have a bad habit of not doing that. Yeah, But I'm going to try it. And, yeah, I know. It's just, like, I feel like I've done well enough by putting it on. The problem for me is, like, if I put it on under my makeup, I'm not going to reapply. Like, sorry. No, yeah. <laughs> Why would you? You know? It would just fuck everything up. But, yeah. Love this stuff. I get this at Sephora, but I'll link it down below. It is kind of pricey, but it's worth it because it's, like, something that works for me. Next category. Let's do lip stuff for our next category of recs. Ooh. So, like, balms, lipsticks. You can yeah. go first. I'm a big fan of putting Vaseline on my lips. I do it at night, Mm. like before I sleep. And then I do it after I brush my teeth in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I always have like a mini Vaseline with me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Just because like, I think that those are so cute. Yeah, for me, that just works the best is just having like those little tubs of Vaseline Mm -hmm. to moisturize or not even moisturize, but protect my lips and stuff. Yeah, for actual lip colors. Since I'm, you know, the lipstick one out of us. Yes, (laughs) Um, definitely. (laughs) I really like the look of, again, Korean style lip tints. Mm -hmm. Um, My favorite one is the Peripera Inky Velvet ones. They are super buttery, super soft. Compared to other ones, they don't transfer as much. They still transfer, but not as bad as some of the other ones. I have a couple random lipsticks that I just throw on sometimes depending on like what I'm wearing. So the color is either like a little more red orange or Mm -hmm. like a true red. I'm a very big red lipstick wearer. I always wear Mm -hmm. some type of red. Yeah. I also have very recently gotten into liquid lipsticks because I was so tired of drinking my coffee and having it all come off on the first sip and leaving it all (laughs) along the cup. Uh It always looks gross. For a drugstore brand, the Maybelline Matte Ink Superstay ones are super cool. I have like the bright red one of that. The only problem is with those is it really, really dries out your lips, but it stays. But then it's also super hard to take off. That's like a really good budget one because it's only $8 or less, depending like if you buy it at Target or Walmart Mm -hmm. and it actually works. So that's a really good budget one. If you want to splurge on a liquid lipstick, the Stila Cosmetics one, the Last All Day one, those are Mm -hmm. like $22. I got one as a gift recently from my aunt in red, and it's so buttery (laughs) soft. Like that thing doesn't dry out your lips, which is really nice. So like that's the only liquid lipstick I had ever tried that didn't dry out my lips. And it looked great, and it feels great on your lips and stuff, so... There's based on price point of what you're getting, you know, but if you don't care that much about it drying out your lips and stuff, the Maybelline Superstay ones are really good. But if you want to splurge a little, the Stila Cosmetic ones are good. Nice. I literally know nothing about lipstick. (laughs) I think, like I said, I have super dry skin. I have super dry lips. So I feel like lipstick just looks awful on me. I never use lipstick. (laughs) But I love the red colors on you. They always look so good. And you pull them off so well. I feel like I look like a clown whenever I wear lipstick. (laughs) (laughs) The one problem I have is for my face, I guess, or technically for my lips, is I basically, my mouth is closed in a relaxed way. Mm -hmm. I literally don't have like a top lip. (laughs) 
<laughs> like it's just my bottom lip so uh-huh. it just looks when i line it with liquid lipstick it looks pretty good because i have a pretty defined cupid's bow mm-hmm. so that's like the only time you can really tell i have a top lip is when i'm wearing liquid lipstick because i line it very carefully but if i'm wearing just regular lipstick i'll just like slap it on and mash my lips together so like you can't tell i have a top lip <laughs> oh my gosh (laughs) well that's nice though I feel like with lipstick you can do like a lot of I've seen a lot of people do like fun tricks with their lipstick Mm -hmm. to make their lips look fuller I'm like amazed by it I've tried overlining my lips and it doesn't look good so I just don't do it if anything I kind of like go a little bit inside (laughs) Mm -hmm. oh really (laughs) yeah like um interesting I don't know if it's like they're called like gradient lips so you Mm -hmm. like just put product on the middle and kind of fan it out so it kind of oh yeah so that's what I would do like normal lipsticks if I'm not lining it with like a liquid lipstick because if I put the regular kind of like velvety kind of lipsticks just like along there it it does not look good so I do Mm. like the gradient lip type thing yeah I do that with my lip balms if I don't want because I have some lip balms that are like a bit a bit rich in color and if I don't want that rich of a color then I just you know do the gradient thing where I just put like a little bit on and Mm -hmm. then I just kind of spread it out all over my lips with the little product I'll give my recs for my lip balms Mm -hmm. (laughs) since I don't have any lipstick um, recs (laughs) but let's see oh Glossier the lip balm.com I love these It's just expensive Vaseline, basically, but I really like it. I like the original scent slash flavor, so there's, like, no scent in it. (laughs) (laughs) I just got the mint one, so it tastes very nice. I really like mint-flavored things, so if you like that, I really recommend it. But it's also kind of expensive because it's Glossier, so. But their packaging and literally everything about them, like, is so appealing to me. (laughs) So I just... I, like their packaging is just so nice. I mm-hmm. love pink. So I really, they really got me on that one. But I really like those. But I, I kind of don't like that you have to use your fingers to put the lip balm on. That's the one thing I don't like about it. But other than that, it's pretty great. Oh, see, that would work for um, me because I dip my finger in the Vaseline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you don't mind like it for me it's not a problem because I have like a lot of things like that I do use Vaseline too occasionally but I don't I have like a big pet peeve of having things on my hands like Mm -hmm. sticky things or like whenever I cook an egg and I get like some of the egg on my hand once I crack it I I just can't stand it (laughs) like I I that's just one of my pet peeves so I it's kind of irritating to me but it's it's fine it's worth it (laughs) Another lip balm, I guess this is a lip balm, or it says tinted lip treatment. It has SPF 15. I didn't even know that until now, but it's the Sugar Rosé Tint by Fresh. It smells really good. It tastes good, and it's this cute, it kind of looks like a hot pink color, but it goes on like a little lighter than that. It's really pretty on your lips. I really like that. Is it hydrating? Eh, not really, (laughs) but it looks really nice. The next one, I don't know. A lot of people know, but Milk Makeup, they have like these, I think they market them as blushes, but they're actually, it's like a lip and cheek product. I mean, I have it in the color Work, so you can use it on your cheeks and your lips, but I never use anything on my cheeks because I really don't need blush, like Lynn was saying. We don't, we're just very pink people. (laughs) So I really like that if I want like a little more color. I guess this isn't really a lip balm, but... This is, like, the closest I'll ever get to lipstick. I, like, tried out, like, a bunch of lip glosses and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, Sephora had this best of lip gloss pack or whatever, lip gloss slash lip balm pack. So I bought it. It was, like, the best thing I've ever bought from Sephora. (laughs) But they had this full-size NARS lip balm. It's in the shade. um, (laughs) The shade's called Orgasm. Oh, Um, that's, like, the most popular shade beautiful. from NARS, though. Like, Dude, it's their highlighter, amazing. their blush. Yeah. Anything that's named orgasm from them. Dude. The highlighter, the blush, the lip color, every a hit every time. It's literally, I, I'm looking it up right now. It's literally $28 for this lip balm. But I'm telling you, it's it feels bougie. It's very nice. <laughs> I really like it on my lips. It doesn't dry me out, which is, like, a big issue for me but Mm -hmm. I really like it it's very nice the packaging is very pretty too it's like this pink rose gold I love it it looks great on your lips too so I really recommend that one but for uh, lazy people 
you can literally use the lipstick that you use or lip balm like anything tinted on your lips you can put it on your cheeks and it matches so it looks nice so yeah you can literally I used to do that all the time like every day we used to work together like while I was mm-hmm. walking in I'd put on my lipstick and I'd like put my pinky like a clean pinky obviously <laughs> on the lipstick and put it like right on my cheeks and then use my fingers and like smack it around on my face <laughs> yeah no I think that's why I have that's why milk makeup it's a brand in Sephora that's why they make this little thing mm-hmm. it's like a little tube it's like lip and cheek yeah stuff so you can use it so it like matches mm-hmm. unfortunately that doesn't that's not gonna happen for me <laughs> <laughs> it's really yeah it's really smart marketing on their part and I agree it'll look nice if you do that I'm trying to think what other lip stuff I use I'm sure there's like a bunch of other lip balms but one thing I use at night is the Laneige lip sleeping mask everybody I feel like everybody has heard of this or like mm-hmm. knows about it I have it in like the original like berry scent I love it. Um, That's a Korean brand. Yeah, it is a Korean brand. Mm-hmm. I absolutely love this stuff. It smells great. If I I noticed that I have to put it on right before I go to sleep because otherwise I'm going to lick it off eventually. <laughs> like if I put, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I, I'll like, it'll just come off naturally if I put it on the while before I go to sleep. But mm-hmm. if I do that, um, my lips look really nice in the morning. Like they look really good and mm. like refreshed so I recommend that it's also I think this is 20 bucks but yeah that's that's good stuff see what's the next category we should talk about maybe eyeshadow oh yeah so I don't usually wear eyeshadow (laughs) (laughs) okay but I have like two go-tos when I want something a little bit more than just a single color on my lid Mm -hmm. I have this little square from Misha which is another Korean brand (laughs) Mm -hmm. it's like this tiny square and it has brown on the bottom pink and then like a light cream color on the top and they're all together like that so all I do is I swipe my pinky on it and I put it on my lid to create a gradient and I just like tap it onto my lid so it's already all blended for me that's like my my quick one if I want to sit there and create a look and you know sometimes you do If you're going out, sometimes you want to spice it up. My favorite palette that I've ever bought and is the one I'm using right now is the Urban Decay Cherry Palette. Oh, nice. Naked Cherry, sorry. It's like from their Urban Decay Naked line, which is like Mm -hmm. everybody knows those eyeshadows. But I really, really like the cherry one because it has a lot of pink and purple and brown, which kind of close to what looks really good with me and generally matches the clothing I wear. And I was talking about this with you when it came out, actually, that I think this is actually a pretty good palette for people like us who are mixed white and Asian. Mm-hmm. Like the colors all look really nice on people who have the same kind of skin as us in the way that is like they have both pink and yellow undertones. All these mm-hmm. colors are so flattering on my skin and I know they would be on yours too. So <laughs> that's a good palette to pick up. If I'm using that palette, I'm going all out. So I use the Urban Decay like primer potion for eyeshadow. If mm-hmm. I'm using that just to like be fancy, but oh my gosh, um, but I have I to literally... do that because I have oily lids. So if I don't oh, do that, okay. it's gonna crease. So oh, I I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I literally don't know enough about makeup. I <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, what the hell is a potion? <laughs> oh yeah, the product is called Primer Potion. It's an eyeshadow primer. Oh, I didn't even know they had eyeshadow primers. See, this is why I shouldn't be a makeup artist because I literally <laughs> know nothing. <laughs> That's really cool. I like that. I love Urban Decay. Mm-hmm. I love them. Oh my gosh. My favorite palette by them, I have Naked 2 and Naked 3. And mm-hmm. I gotta say, Naked 3, I love that one. I haven't used it in a while because it's kind of old and I should probably throw it away. <laughs> but... I think out of all the palettes I've gotten over the years, Naked 3 absolutely is the best palette I've ever used. It's got pink. It's got a lot of pink tones and like there are some brown tones too. Like, and then there's some like, there's like one color, one shade that's like a little too dark for my eyes because I don't really do like a super dark eye. Mm -hmm. Um, I usually do a pretty light pink colored eye Mm -hmm. or like beige or tan. 
but I absolutely love this palette. I think it would work really well for people with our skin tone as well because it's very pink. There's a lot of pink tones in it too. Mm -hmm. It's more of a neutral palette, I would say. So if you're into that, definitely get Naked 3. But I also know that it's pretty expensive. So yeah, but it's worth it in my opinion. I think it's worth the $54 that it is. Oh, yeah. Um, I got mine on sale because that was, like, my first really big splurge mm -hmm. for eyeshadow. And I'm so happy yeah. I picked that, even though it was, like, I picked it because it was on sale, not gonna lie. But I really liked the colors in it anyway. So yeah. I think that's a good thing. I, I almost actually did get a Naked 3 instead, but it wasn't on sale. So the, you know, the funds called me to the Naked Cherry. <laughs> <laughs> I totally understand that. But if you feel like buying another naked palette, it's definitely like naked three would look great on you. You've got the the pink tones, the pinks. Mm -hmm. Their shades in that palette are amazing. Just like it would look so good on you. Literally every every shade. Oh, um yeah. So I recommend that. But literally any palette by Urban Decay, I really recommend. I really like all of their palettes. They're pretty good. But, like, another palette that's kind of similar, I just bought it. It's the Tartlet in Bloom by Tarte. Um, and it's, I was surprised. It actually smells, like, kind of chocolatey when you open it. Oh, really? Yeah, it smells really good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was not expecting that. But it's very cute. It doesn't really have pink tones, but it has very neutral, like, brownish beige tones mm -hmm. um so if you like that for your eyeshadows I recommend and the reason I got this was also because it has a really big mirror when you open it because it's like kind of a square shaped palette mm -hmm. so I really recommend that one that one's a little cheaper I think I think it's like 30 to 40 dollars mm -hmm. oh and then one last one that I really like is the Kaja Beauty Bento <laughs> oh my god <laughs> I remember yeah. one time we went into Sephora, I was so close <laughs> to buying one just because the packaging yeah. is so cute. Yeah, they know what they're doing. They know how to get you pulled into like wanting to buy it. I really am surprised it took me this long to buy this um, because I remember you and I went to Sephora and we were like, oh my God, we should buy it immediately. We were but literally we standing in front of the display, like staring at them, trying to like justify <laughs> and like tell ourselves we don't need this right now. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I I gave in though I I gave in because I'm weak, but um it's so cute. Yeah, it literally if people don't know what it is, it literally looks like a stacked bento box. So you've got like three shades stacked on top of each other, um, and you can just open all of them at once or one by one. And there's like a mirror at the top of the deck. Uh, so it's really cute. I got like the brown tone one again. <laughs> Obviously, there's a trend with how I like my lid makeup to look. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's all I have for eyeshadow. The um, one thing I want to mention, just because I recommended like one Korean kind of eyeshadow and one American brand, it really depends on the look you're going for. But just as like a warning, if you do buy Korean brand eyeshadows, the general trend with them is they're all very, very, very light in pigment, as in like, mm. they don't have a lot of payoff, a lot of the American brands. And then people that have never dipped into like Korean makeup brands, they don't know that. And then they are kind of disappointed in the pigment payoff. But right. it's just, that's what's popular in Korea. So they obviously are catering to that specific market if, of like light wash eyeshadow. So just a disclaimer mm -hmm. that one that I mentioned, it is a very light wash and that's what I like from it. So the two palettes, they'll give you different things. If you know, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. That's a good thing to know. Let's see, what should we do next? We don't really wear much outside of those. So we could... Oh, wait, mascara? Oh, and eyebrows? <laughs> oh, you, you're the mascara girl. You go. I'll just do mascara and eyebrows so we can move on to our next topic too. <laughs> I'll just wrap it up all in one. So over quarantine, I tried out so many mascaras. I don't even know how many because I wanted to really like perfect my look and how I wanted it to look, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's been like a lifelong, lifelong. <laughs> it's been like a journey since freshman year of high school to figure out how I want my mascara to look. 
for the longest time, I used Maybelline the Rocket Lash Bless, I think is what it's called. It's like in a blue tube. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. That one's really great. The spoolie on that one, fantastic. It's great. I love that one. But I kind of am veering away from, like, volumized uh, mascara to, like, lengthening mascara. Mm -hmm. Um, So the one that I'm, like, in love with and I think I'm going to stick with for a really long time is the L'Oreal Telescopic Mascara. It's in, like, a gold tube. You can get it at Target, Walmart. And it really, like, lengthens your eyelashes. Not that I really need it, but it looks the way I want it to look. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing. It's really great. You don't have to use a lot either to get it to lengthen your eyelashes. So it's, I really love that. Man, I wish you recommended that to me, like, last week. (laughs) I bought a new mascara like this this week or two ago no it's okay (laughs) wait which one did you buy so for me because like I said earlier I have like short straight down lashes that don't hold a curl so I bought Mm -hmm. I bought a Maybelline one that was like what's the name of it it's like the lash lift one is that the is that the pink one no it's like a silver tube and then before that I used the snap cara that one was pretty good because it was waterproof and, like, I would smudge a lot because of the way my eyes are and the way, like, my lashes would bump against stuff. So mm-hmm. I need waterproof and stuff like that oh. and smudge proof. Yeah. Because it, That's true. it smudges so easily just because my lashes are, like, down so it'll smudge under my eyes a lot. Ah, uh, okay. But the lash lift one, I kind of like it. It, it does help hold the curl I've seen more than like the Snap Caro one, but the Snap Caro one is I like the wand on that. It's like the curve one, mm, like a little mm-hmm. U U shape, a light U shape, if you will. <laughs> I know, yeah, that's really I've never tried the. Oh, they have like a blue one too for Snap Caro. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool! I haven't tried these. I don't even remember the ones I tried. <laughs> oh, I think I've tried I tried a Tarte mascara that was pretty good too, but it's like kind of expensive and this L'Oreal one isn't as expensive because it's yeah. like drugstore brand. Mm-hmm. So um literally I'm in love with it. But yeah, no, next time you should try if you want lengthening, I think they have it also. I don't use the uh waterproof because I hate how I don't need it and also like I hate how long I have to or how much like makeup remover I have to use to get it off oh really but yeah like it for some reason it might just be my eyelashes it just it's not good for my eyelashes because I really have to rub a lot Mm -hmm. to get it off I lose like a lot of eyelashes so I try to avoid waterproof as much as possible but I'm pretty sure they have the telescopic mascara in water they have a waterproof version of it so I would look I would check that out time Okay, I'll try that. I remove Um, all of my makeup with coconut oil and then I wash my face. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you'd be able to do that with sensitive skin. I I do it quickly so it doesn't clog my pores since I have oily skin. So that's the issue I would run into. But that's the easiest way for me to remove stuff. Yeah, I mean, I have a... We'll get into it in skincare when we talk about that. Mm Mm-hmm. But I use like a an oil and it, it takes it off really well. It's just I have to rub it more mm-hmm. because it, it stays on my eyelashes more because mm-hmm. it is waterproof. So it just but my eyelashes fall out a lot more than I want them to. So I just like avoid it using it because I really don't need to use mm-hmm. it. Oh, and one thing I wanted to mention, they have L'Oreal also has this voluminous primer that I really like too. And it makes your eyelashes look white, which kind of looks gross when you put it on. But <laughs> it, it I really like it because it like separates your lashes if you have a problem with that or like you want to make your eyelashes look even longer and like more volumized I recommend using that too Ooh. um and then eyebrows I use Anastasia Be- Beverly Hills um I use the brow definer now I used to use the eyebrow pencil which is also really good but brow definer is really nice because I don't have to sharpen the pencil I use their little pot pomade thing is that good I think my cousin bought the wrong shade and gave it to me like a million years ago. <laughs> so I don't know how old it is, but it still works and it's not moldy. So I'm going to keep using it. Yeah, um, that's how I feel about makeup. <laughs> if it's not molding and like it doesn't smell funny and it like doesn't make my skin irritated, I'm going to keep using it. Yeah, it works. You have to powder on top of it, which is fine because I powder my face anyway. Mm-hmm. Because if you just use it, and you don't like set it it will 
smudge or like move around a little bit so you gotta set it down but I do my eyebrows very very lightly anyway I don't you know how some people do really defined brows I don't got time for that I just make it a little bit darker because I have some sparse areas and that's it yeah literally same that's the only reason I I use my the brow definer it's very like I use it in the shade dark brown Mm -hmm. um and I just use it pretty much to fill in the bald spots I have on my eyebrows. I call them bald spots because I've never seen a hair grow out of them, (laughs) out of, like, those particular spots. Um, I don't know what happened to my eyebrows, to be honest. um, So they fill them in. I do the same thing as you. I do a very light eyebrow. Like, you probably wouldn't even be able to tell if you didn't know me very well, like, Mm -hmm. if I did my eyebrows or not. But yeah, sometimes when I wash off my makeup, I can't tell the difference in my eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some days I accidentally do them a little darker than I want them to be. And I'm like, oh, I feel like I look crazy. But then like no one can tell because I literally don't do much to them. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, okay, whatever. Who cares? You know? Yeah. All right. And anyway, I guess we should move on to skincare. Oh, yeah. We should talk about what type of skin we have and like any recs we have yeah so I guess we've established that we have pretty opposite end skin types (laughs) um I'm oily and like combination slash oily like more towards the oily side and my skin is not sensitive and yours is dry and sensitive right yeah very dry very sensitive (laughs) (laughs) so I have to I use like those little oil sheets a oh, lot. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, even though I powder my face, like, by kind of afternoon time, I need to, you know, either reapply powder or use the oil sheets to soak up any oils on my face. I'm pretty oily. Powders, this isn't really skincare. This is still, like, kind of on the fringe of makeup. I really like, well, I kind of just use whatever I pick up. Honestly, like, powders aren't that big of a deal for me since I don't have sensitive skin. But I really like using um the little puffs to apply them I just you know feel cute doing that there's no real advantage to it for me over a brush (laughs) but for actual skincare this may sound counterintuitive but I moisturize my skin in the morning and at night with jojoba oil even though I have oily skin because usually when your skin's oily it means you're over producing to compensate for your skin being yeah needing more oil Um, Mm -hmm. So when I switched to using jojoba oil on my skin every day, it's helped a little bit. And also like, it feels nice because jojoba oil is like the oil that's closest to what your skin naturally makes. So I use that in the morning. I guess we should just say our routines. So when I wake up, I rinse my face with water and then pat it dry. And then I will put on jojoba oil all over my face including like my eyelashes and lips to try to get some moisture there I'll put Vaseline right away on my lips after that to help lock in the oil there and um then I'll put this random cream moisturizer I got I think it's a Pond's one and Mm, yeah then I'll put my sunscreen on and if I'm wearing makeup I'll put makeup on and then powder but usually I'll let that sunscreen sit for a few minutes before I powder my face Mm -hmm. and then at night I'll wash everything off with coconut oil leave that on to kind of melt everything off while I like brush my teeth and then when I'm done with all that stuff I'll wash it with like a cleanser to get the oil off and sometimes I have to wash it twice just to make sure to get all the coconut oil out because coconut oil can clog your pores Mm -hmm. so I'll do that make sure my face is like not oily and then I'll use this the hyaluronic acid from The Ordinary, I'll use three drops of that and massage it into my face. And then once that kind of soaks in so it, you know, it doesn't feel that sticky anymore, I'll do the jojoba oil after that. And I do it in this order because how you apply those, the order you apply those things is kind of important. I'll do the oil mm-hmm. after that. And then I'll put Vaseline on my lips and eyes. And then I'll put on the moisturizer on top of that to help seal the oil in. Uh, but I'll do it really thick at night and in the morning, not so thick since I'm trying to, you know, powder it away later. But I'll put it on really thick at night and I'll put the Vaseline on thick at night because um I sleep with a CPAP, which like blows air for me when I'm sleeping. 
if I forget to put Vaseline on, my lips will be so cracked and dry in the morning because it's like air flowing, right? So I have mm-hmm. to put on like a Vaseline super thick. So now I'm thinking maybe I should do like the lip mask instead. <laughs> like a while that thing's on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. It may, it may work. I feel like everyone's different. It may work for you. It may not. Because I it took me a while to figure out like how my lips would just soak it up or I would like lick it away. So I had to figure out like when I should apply it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you just got to figure it out. But I really recommend it. It tastes really good, too. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that's my routine's like, really simple like that mm-hmm. because I don't like to spend too much money on products. Because, like, like we were saying, some of these prices are kind of ridiculous. Yeah. Um, don't cheap out on stuff that you put on your face for skincare, though. Um, yeah. That's kind of dangerous sometimes. Yeah. You need to make sure your skin is clean. Yeah, oh yeah do like... this all with clean hands by the way don't be like just throwing products on your face with dirty hands <laughs> <laughs> yeah I yeah please <laughs> um but other than that I try to do it once a week but honestly I probably only do it once a month because I forget I'll do sheet masks or like a uh like a clay mask because that helps with oily skin mm-hmm. yeah um, but sometimes I just need like hydration so I'll do sheet masks yeah I should do them once a week, but I'm lazy and I forget. That's fine. I mean, <laughs> we're human. <laughs> I guess I'll talk about my routine. It's literally so simple. I wake up. I may or may not wash my face with water. Um, <laughs> I usually forget to, which is probably really bad. I should probably at least wash my face like with water every morning, but I usually forget to. And then after that, I just, I put on sunscreen and then I put on my makeup after that. And then let's see, then I just put on a lip balm to make sure my lips are hydrated. I have to do that pretty often, like constantly because my lips are so dry. So Mm -hmm. to maintain them and like for them to not be cracked, um, I have to keep applying it like often. And then that's it for the morning. (laughs) At the end of the day, Or if I'm really dry, I will also, I forgot to mention this, if I'm really dry, which I can be, I have like this skin condition where it's like, if I don't put lotion on my skin, like starting in late September, early October, like if I don't put lotion on, it's going to get severely cracked and very, I'm going to get weird patches of like dry skin. It's, I forget what it's called. My dad has it too. I got it from him. Um, but it's just like weird dry patches. Um, Mm -hmm. I had this really weird incident once in high school and I learned my lesson from it. And ever since then, I haven't had an issue because I've been keeping on top of it. But Mm -hmm. like, if I don't put lotion on, I had this weird dry patch above my eyebrow or like right below my eyebrow, but above my eyelid. Mm -hmm. And it was like this super dry flaky patch. It looked awful and it took forever to like get it back to where it should have been yeah and I get that on my on my knuckles and on my like knees and ankles too I actually had that on my ankle this year because I forgot to put lotion on them but yeah so I have very dry skin obviously (laughs) do you want some of my oil (laughs) no I so I have a lot of good like products and we'll get into them um in a second but yeah I meant my face oil (laughs) oh (laughs) I think I need some like it's my I literally don't produce any (laughs) like my mom has um oily skin so I use I tried using one of her like oil blot paper things Mm -hmm. that you said you use Mm -hmm. I tried it once literally nothing was on the paper I was like oh okay I really am dry (laughs) um but yeah so anyway if I if I'm like preparing for the winter months I'll put lotion on in the morning as well Mm -hmm. on my face and I'll get into what I use when we get into our recs but uh, anyway back to nighttime so when it comes time to get in the shower I usually take up my makeup off in the shower so I just use a face cleanser and then I I always double cleanse if I put on like um, a lot of makeup Um, Mm -hmm. if I don't put on like and a lot of makeup to me is like like a dab of concealer and sunscreen (laughs) If you're doing <laughs> a lot of mascara. mascara. <laughs> yeah, literally, yeah. <laughs> so I I just like to make sure my skin is clean. So I usually double cleanse if I put on 
air quotes, a lot of makeup. <laughs> mm-hmm. On a day-to-day basis, I usually just use like a very basic cleanser and I'll recommend what it is because I really like it. But yeah, so cleanse my face, like get all that stuff off. And then at night, I put on my lip sleeping mask and then I put on my face lotion. And <laughs> it's gonna be, it's like a weird um, face lotion that I use, but I'll, I'll talk about it once we get into our recs for skincare. Um, so I guess we should mm-hmm. dive into that. Yeah, you can go ahead. Oh, okay. So I'll start off with my recommendations for skincare. I'll just go for my face lotion first. So I use this baby eczema lotion by Aveeno, which is really, I really like this product because it's made for babies. So there's like no fragrance in it. <laughs> um, and it's like made for people who have eczema. Obviously, I don't, but I have very dry patches and or I can and I have very dry skin. So it's it has like a colloidal oatmeal in it. So it's Mm -hmm. really good for people um, who have like dry skin or eczema. So I really recommend that product. I haven't tried like the regular, I think they make it for adults as well, but I haven't tried that because I've just had such a great experience with the baby eczema lotion. So I recommend that (laughs) to people who have like really dry skin like me. I feel like when you need anything a little bit thicker, like Mm -hmm. if you're just having like, if you're not satisfied with stuff, I feel like going for those sensitive skin eczema products in general are usually pretty helpful for people. Yeah, I really recommend that. That's just for my day to day thing. Like if I really if I had like some really severe dry patches, I have this CeraVe moisturizing cream, not the lotion, Mm -hmm. the cream and that's really heavy. Um, That actually made me made my face feel really oily because I wasn't super dry and I my skin was really hydrated when I first started using it. So I don't recommend that if you have like oily skin um, or like combo skin. Um, only use it if you have like severely dry skin that needs to be restored to its natural back to what it normally is. But yeah, I recommend CeraVe for like a lot of their lotions and stuff. And they also have like a really good eye cream too because eye creams can be really expensive which is ridiculous but yeah I really like their eye cream too I'm trying to think oh yeah they also have a really good they just came out with it a really good cleanser it's the I think it's cream to foam cleanser and it's made for people with like dry to I think it's dry to combo skin I'll Mm. have to look it up but I'll link it but it takes off your makeup too so I really like that stuff um it doesn't dry out my skin so I really recommend that If you want to take off really light makeup, but if you're wearing really heavy makeup, I wouldn't recommend using that. Um, But the reason I really like CeraVe is because it has like ceramides and I think it has hyaluronic acid in it too. So it's really good for your skin. I'm trying to think another cleanser. Oh, I, I experimented a lot with cleansers over quarantine, but the one that I use for like really heavy duty makeup, air quotes, (laughs) Mm -hmm. um is the dhc um cleansing oil Mm -hmm. um that one really gets everything off like if you want everything off your face that's the one so i really like that and plus it doesn't dry out my skin either which is an issue i've had with other cleansers but that one's really great the fresh soy face cleanser is really good too that one has like a fragrance in it i'm pretty sure but because you wash it off i don't have an issue with it i mean it's Mm -hmm. been really good with my skin trying to think what else I use to remove my makeup oh actually those are the only things I use to remove my makeup I used to use makeup wipes but I think they're like super wasteful and like not good for the environment and also they can be a little bit harsh on your skin too yeah aren't they don't because you're like literally rubbing yeah so like they would make my skin because it's sensitive skin it would be like super red I also like tried using like the Garnier micellar water it works so well for so many people but for some reason it just like it made me break out so I could not use that but I heard micellar water is really good for some people I just don't know one that works really well for me but oh and then like the simple cleanser I was talking about that I use on like a day-to-day basis it's called (laughs) it's called simple that's the brand I forget what the like 
what the product name is actually, but it literally has 10 or fewer ingredients in it. It's a very simple cleanser. It's just used to like keep your face clean. Like if you have nothing on it, you, you can't remove makeup with it, but like it's a good cleanser to use for like a double cleanse, like for your second cleanse. Oh, so okay. I would use like the DHC oil and then I would use the simple cleanser just mm-hmm. to make sure like I got everything off and my skin is clean. So I really recommend that. I think that's about it for my recommendations for skincare. I'm glad you went first because I think it was kind of obvious in the stuff that I use that none of it is very branded. Like <laughs> it's literally yeah. just coconut oil because um, I also mm-hmm. use it for my hair sometimes. Any coconut oil will do. Mm-hmm. Any jojoba oil will do as long as it's like the cold pressed stuff not mixed with anything just like the straight up jojoba oil i bought a really big bottle of it from bezos so where is that oh what is like that? jeff bezos like the dude that owns amazon <laughs> oh okay i was like that sounds like jeff bezos but i was like what is that a store i'm not aware of <laughs> no i just meant i got it off amazon but i got a big bottle because i tried not to give him more money than he needs <laughs> yeah yeah so I just buy like it once in a while so I buy a really big bottle of it um because it can get kind of it's hard to find in stores I feel like so that's the only reason I order it and I don't have the sensitive skin issue so I just buy whatever like random moisturizer and I'll like try Mm -hmm. different things so I don't really have a recommendation for that or like a cleanser I Mm kind of just have one but, like, yeah. I make sure it's not something that's going to harm my face and, like, a really cheap one because that's not good. Yes. Like, you can really hurt yourself that way. So I yeah. definitely, like, look it up and look at reviews of it if I'm trying something new. But I don't really have one that I really love or anything. Okay. I'm jealous. Because <laughs> I have to do, like, a 30-page research paper on, like, my skincare. Like, because I need to, like, find out if it's got bad ingredients I'm like oh my god this one this Mm -hmm. one person didn't have a good time but I realize like even if you read the reviews like if as long as they're overall positive you're not gonna know how it's gonna react with your skin because everyone's skin is so different so just Mm -hmm. read the reviews for overall positivity if it's overall negative don't buy it (laughs) yeah I, Mm -hmm. I feel the same way like I guess when we get into our last category here about hair care how you feel about skincare so I might be like yeah. borderline obsessive about it, but I do. Yeah, think, I think you know, you going and through I all like the reviews the and like all that like stuff with hair care stuff. Because I literally don't, I literally know nothing about hair care. And like, I know so much about skincare. And I've learned a lot over quarantine, mm-hmm. maybe because of Hiram, but, <laughs> um, but I, I just like mm-hmm. wanted to become more aware of what I'm putting on my skin because, yeah. um, it's so sensitive and it's so dry and I just I really want to take care of it because I'm going to be living with it hopefully Mm -hmm. for a long time so I just like I don't know I've really I don't mind spending a lot of money on products but I realize simple brands CeraVe are really good for skin and like it's not very expensive so yeah Um, I know I'm lucky in that sense my the only really quote-unquote issue I have is oiliness but it's like controllable so that's mm. why I'm pretty lucky in the sense that I can just use things just like straight up jojoba oil and stuff like that on my face. So I don't I don't have to, you know, go try a lot of different things. But yeah. OK, yeah. well, we should move on to to hair care. The last one. Sorry, this is yeah. so long, guys. We just this is stuff we actually, you know, think about we're a lot. Passionate. <laughs> yeah, we're passionate about it. And it, it's like it affects your everyday life. Like it's part of your life. Mm -hmm. every day so yeah it's important it's an important topic so the hair care is actually pretty important to me because I um I used to get straight perms a lot but the Mm -hmm. reason I did like the Japanese straight perms so it like permanently straightens your hair for like a year basically the reason I did those was because my hair was so frizzy and I think a lot of mixed people not just like our mix but in general they might come across this issue. My hair was so frizzy because I recently started trying to take care of it as if it was wavy slash curly hair instead. Mm -hmm. And my hair is actually like wavy slash curly, more on the wavy side than the curly side. But I damaged it a couple times doing those perms. So it's going to take a while for the damaged parts to grow out and for it to really 
show as much as it should. But my mm-hmm. hair stopped pretty much being frizzy once I started taking care of it that way. So a mm-hmm. lot of people don't know that if you're used to treating your hair like straight hair and just saying like why it's so frizzy, you might actually have some kind of wave pattern in your hair. And like, I don't know why I never thought about that because my dad had really curly hair when he was younger. He's like, well, mm-hmm. now. <laughs> but my, <laughs> my mom has really pin straight fine hair. And mm-hmm. that was my thing is my hair was very fine. So I was like, oh, it must be like my mom's hair. So I would treat it like straight hair, but it would be so frizzy right. all the time. Um, Wait, but then, I have a quick question. Yeah. What color was your hair when you were a kid? Was it like a different color? My hair's always been pretty dark. I used oh, okay. to dye it a lot. Mm-hmm. So that was also something that damaged it pretty bad. But my hair's like pretty dark. Like it's pretty much almost black. But in the mm-hmm. summer, I would get like a little bit of, it would lighten a little bit to like yeah. a dark brown. But it's mm-hmm. not it's not light naturally by any means. I recently dyed it back to like my natural color. I know your hair's light-ish. It's lighter than mine. Well, yeah, it is lighter than yours, but it's like, so uh, the reason I asked that is because when I was a baby, <laughs> mixed <laughs> mixed issues. But anyway, when I was a baby, I like had like blonde hair. Mm. Um, yeah. Oh, so I know a lot of people yeah. that have that or like really light brown. Yeah, mine um, was like golden. No, mine was like, like was... black hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Actually, I was bald for the longest time. I didn't have a lot of hair when I came out or like I had hair when I came out of the womb. And mm-hmm. then I lost it all. And then... Life stressed you out. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently that first day out, just... I was like, nope. Can't <laughs> handle this. So my hair fell out. And then when it grew back, I had, like, golden hair. And ever since ever since then, it's just, like, gotten darker over time. But mm-hmm. it's weird because people have asked me, like, oh, do you dye your hair? Or, like, do you get highlights in your hair? And I'm like, no, mm-hmm. I've literally, I've literally never dyed my hair. I've never, it's just, I've got, like, like, my roots are very dark. Like, it's probably the same color as your hair. It's very, mm-hmm. very, very dark brown. Because my mom's hair is um, black, because mm-hmm. she's Japanese. Um, and then my dad's hair, he used to have, like, a dirty, he used to be dirty blonde. And, like, it's a very light brown right now Mm -hmm. um but so I guess I have like a combo of the two um but yeah the the roots are very dark but my my tips of my hair they're very they almost look like red in the sunlight Mm -hmm. but it's just like a it's a lighter brown yeah um and that just happens because of sun exposure yeah I think so and I also think like my genetics also added into that too Mm -hmm. and considering that I was like blonde as a kid Mm -hmm. (laughs) which is just so weird to think about but yeah if you like compare the tips of my hair to my roots they look totally different Mm -hmm. so I understand why people are like you must dye your hair and I'm like no sorry (laughs) it's just my hair (laughs) but your hair isn't like pin straight or anything right no it's very it was super curly as a very young kid Mm -hmm. like it wasn't just wavy it was super curly and then it's like as time went on the darker my hair got the less curly it got but it's always been wavy like yeah I have really wavy hair and I know hair texture changes over time so that's like that was my issue is my hair used to be straight like when I was a kid like all the pictures my hair was just like really straight but my Mm. brother was the opposite he was he had really curly hair when he was little Mm-hmm. And then he still has pretty curly hair now. It's like way more curly than mine because mine's just kind of yeah. wavyish with like some random curls in it. But who knows? Mm-hmm. Since I'm, I have to let it repair itself basically because it's so like gross and dead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, so I think if I knew that it was like my hair texture changing, it would have been a different story. But that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. They used to be blonde. I've heard of mixed people. They're blonde when they're kids. And then their hair darkens. Yeah, yeah it's weird. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense why my hair gets super a lot lighter in the summertime too, though. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's weird to think about. <laughs> yeah. Do you have um, like a hair care routine? Kind of. I mean, I, I should probably go first because I'm going to be really quick. I literally, <laughs> I'm one of the very fortunate people who I've never had an issue with, with frizziness. Mm-hmm. And I, the way I would describe my hair, it's like, 
I've got a lot of hair, but it's very fine. Mm -hmm. Um, So the only issue I have is like, it's so easy for my hair to get tangled. So like, as soon as I'm done brushing it in the morning, after like 30 minutes, it's probably tangled in the back. So that's one of the issues I have with it. But like, that's probably the only thing. So I'll just like go into my hair care routine. So I literally use a kid's detangler. Mm-hmm. what is it I it, I think it's suave or um there's like another brand too that I use I think it's L'Oreal actually yeah L'Oreal and um, suave do kids detanglers I think yeah I really like both of their detanglers yeah I use the suave or the L'Oreal kids sweet pear detangler it smells really good <laughs> um and I know this is really weird because I've never heard of anyone else doing this but it's really good on your hair it's like super gentle so I've been using that since I've been like five years old so I would just use a detangler and brush my hair and that's literally what I do every single day for my hair but like as far as like styling it I don't really style it because I I really like my waves so I mean sometimes you know like sometimes obviously there is a little bit of frizz because it it's pretty dry right now because it's the winter time mm-hmm. so I use this Garnier Fructis like anti-humidity soothing milk Mm-hmm. and it smells really good it smells like fruit <laughs> so I just put a little bit of that in and just put it on my tips if I want it to look a little better but eventually like my hair will become less frizzy throughout the day but that's literally all I do to style my hair I never straighten it or curl it and even if I do like my hair doesn't really listen well to that it like pretty much goes straight back to being wavy Mm -hmm. um it does not like to be anything other than that (laughs) yeah yeah that's it's a pretty short routine it's pretty simple I'm very fortunate to not have to like do a lot to my hair Mm -hmm. and yeah I do wash my hair I've been trying not to wash it every day but I would say I wash it like every other day occasionally like if I do like exercise a lot and I sweat a lot I'm gonna wash my hair Mm -hmm. because I hate for there to be sweat in like my hair because I do sweat a lot and then you get pimples. exercise yeah so I just like if I exercise I have to wash my hair mm-hmm. like I just have to feel clean because otherwise I'm just gonna feel gross but yeah like tonight I didn't wash my hair so I usually do it every other day I guess I used mm-hmm. to do it every day but I think that's really damaging to your hair but mm-hmm. so I do it like every other day and I wash it with this like organic brand it's called Alba and the reason I use that instead of something like basic Dove or like whatever you know those brands uh, is because like I said I have really dry skin so I've had issues in the past where like my my shampoo and conditioner were like drying out my skin so mm-hmm. I needed to use something that was had less chemicals in it and stuff and other bad things. Mm-hmm. So I moved on to this organic brand and I've never gone back since like my skin has been like really good and reacted really well to it. <laughs> mm-hmm. God, it sucks to have such sensitive skin and like dry skin. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, I've been using it. It smells really good too. So I really recommend it. I'll link it down below. I put conditioner in my hair and I, I just shampoo it. Um, and that's pretty much all I do for my hair. Lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm really lucky in that respect. Yeah, yeah. I guess I'll go into mine. So I have the same issue where my hair is very fine, but I have like a decent amount of it. So my hair also gets tangled pretty easily. So I also totally forgot to mention what I use to moisturize my body, but that's because I don't use lotion. I'll include it as part of like my hair slash shower routine. So I dry brush my body before I get in the shower. It looks like something you'd use to brush a horse. (laughs) But it's like, but it's like, it's like an exfoliating procedure. And I do that Mm -hmm. all over my body first. And I wash that brush frequently. So because it is, I'm brushing it before I shower. I only use wood and borbisol brushes and combs. So I'll do that before I get in the shower to detangle my hair. I'm usually wearing it up in braids, especially now since I'm home. So the detangling isn't too bad anymore unless I wear my hair like down. Mm -hmm. So then after I do that, I'll get in the shower. And this is like a hair wash day. I used to wash my hair every other day. And then when I was younger, every day before I really knew how to take care of my hair like as a whole. And I used to wash it every other day. But in quarantine, I have been able to extend that to twice a week. It doesn't smell or anything, so it's fine. Like, I'm not, like, dirty. 
mm-hmm. but I only use shampoo once a week and I use shampoo bars because they usually don't have like silicones and sulfates and stuff like that so I try to mm-hmm. use like really natural stuff on my hair and I only use shampoo on my scalp so on days where I'm shampooing I'll use the bar and shampoo my scalp and then I'll put conditioner in while I'm doing whatever else I'm doing in the shower singing you know dancing whatever trying not to crack my skull open (laughs) and then I'll rinse that out I do like a modified version of the curly girl method where I'll scrunch out all the water but scrunch in a leave-in conditioner while it's Mm -hmm. still like really wet because I need a lot of leave-in conditioner and stuff like that to help the waves form and not just be frizzy I'll do that and then dry with like a t-shirt like a 100% cotton t-shirt and the days I'm not using shampoo, I'm just uh, co-washing, which is, you know, washing your scalp with conditioner only. So you're still removing excess oil, but it's not removing it as harshly as shampoo. Mm-hmm. So I'll do that on the days, like out of the two times, like I'll alternate one or the other. And I have so many like spray leave-ins that I need to use like throughout the week if my ends start looking dry and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But I use a lot of this leave-in conditioner I got from Target that's supposed to be for wavy hair to help like hold the waves and stuff and I also use the Shea Moisture Curl Milk and that one smells so freaking good oh my god Shea Moisture in general is really good for like wavy curly hair and natural hair that's a really good brand they started selling like these giant shampoo and conditioner of it at Costco and I like Mm -hmm. but I didn't need it so I didn't buy it but I'm like kind of happy that it's at Costco because they, they are kind of expensive. But while like my hair is kind of drying in a t-shirt, I uh, my body, I don't like completely dry it with a towel because I use baby oil to moisturize my skin. So after every time I shower, I will apply baby oil everywhere, like a hypoallergenic one. Because sometimes the scented one, since I'm putting that all over my body, is a little irritating. So I'll use like hypoallergenic baby oil and that works well for me. And I usually... um have it braided up and stuff anyway nowadays but when it's down and stuff and wavy I kind of like how it looks so the routine is working for me so far that's good I'm glad it takes people a while to figure out their hair routine Mm -hmm. oh my one friend I won't name her name because I forgot to ask her if it was okay to say her name or not Mm -hmm. But she wanted me to recommend this one inclusive brand. It's called The Main Choice, I believe. And she said it, like, helped her hair grow exponentially. And she said it's really good for, like, Afro hair. So, like, she's African-American. And she said it's really good for people that have Afro hair. And she said that um, not only her and her mother use it, but also her father and her brother. So it's inclusive in that respect as well. Mm -hmm. And she said it's good for all, like, I think she said it was good for all types of hair, actually. Like, from... Wait, let me see. I'm pretty sure she said that. Uh, but she said it helped her hair grow, like, immensely. Um, oh. So I don't know a lot about it, but I trust her completely. So I feel like it would be really good for that. It looks like they have, like, supplements, like vitamins, and they have, like, actual products put in your hair, too. I don't think it's just for curly hair. I remember she said that it goes from, like, I think it, you know, like the, what's that chart? It like goes from like 1A. Yeah, it's like 1A to 4C. Yeah, she said that it even goes to like 4D now. She said that um, the main choice like goes to that as well. She said that's like for the curliest of hair. So I think that's great. Yeah, I think I'll probably end up trying that next time I need more product. But I think that's pretty much it. Sorry, this one was so long. (laughs) We just have so much to say. If you guys have any recommendations that you want to give to us for any hair, skin, and makeup products, let us know. And we'll try to link everything that we mentioned in the description box, but I know we mentioned a lot of stuff. (laughs) Yeah, we did. I think we'll just link our faves. (laughs) Yeah, probably. That's probably what's going to happen. So thank you guys for listening. We're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and we post every Wednesday at 9 a.m. Eastern, and we'll talk to you guys next week. Bye!